Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the Wiki Comic Book Roundup. We covered this week's AXE books as well as this week's Spider Man books. Now it's time to move on to, well, everything else. Kicking things off, we've got Gambit number four. Where we left off, um, Remy and Hit and uh, Aurora, as well as Remy's new friend. Uh, Marissa DeCastro and her mother, Dr. Gabriella DeCastro, were having to move, move, they to go out, move on to uh, greener pastures as uh, the DeCastro's house was, uh, was seemingly, was destroyed by a, a develop uh, a shady developer of Dominic Solaris. Who, it seems, had uh, become an ally of the interstellar bounty hunter Bounty. So uh, this issue, we're on, they're on a, uh, a poker uh, ship, the Samuel Clemens, going along the Mississippi River. Marissa is uh, playing cards in, in the main salon. And while everyone's keeping it, everyone's eyes are fixated on her, Remy and Roro are, uh, well, thieving. Um, they take some of the, some of what they stole, no, they take what they stole to uh, give it to a, uh, And based, especially, uh, well, the money is used to buy supplies for less fortunate, which are, and the supplies are then distributed to said less fortunate. Um, as it, as they had make her, as uh, Remy and Aurora make their way to Alabama, with Marissa and her mother uh, following, Remy seems like he's looking for something, like he's watching for something, and Storm asks what, uh, what it is, and he simply, you know, kind of, a, it, it's nothing. But, uh, they arrive in Huntsville, in Huntsville, Alabama, for Lila Cheney's, uh, show. Um, Lila's introduced to uh, Marissa you know, takes her immediately just happy to see Remy happy and, and Lila takes Marissa to get it get an outfit similar to uh, Remy's mainly in you know the body armor portion uh, Bounty and Salars are keeping an eye out Remy run, runs into uh, Bounty, and the two of them duke it out uh, the parking lot. And Remy actually seems fairly evenly matched against her. And uh, Marissa, noting that uh, Remy's missing, goes to goes to find it. Goes to find her, and. Uh, Run, runs into another group of intergalactic bounty hunters, but they have no interest in her, so she moves on. However, it seems that uh, wait, did I missed the part where Solar is, uh, switches sides. I may have. Uh, yes, uh, so that earlier Solars met with the same uh, other group of bounty hunters that uh, Marissa ran into and switched sides. So when Marissa runs into them, Solars is there and stabs her, explaining that uh, it was basically everything was explained to him about how the outfit works that um, it protects great against guns, not so much against a blade or a punch. And the issue ends with Marissa bleeding out. 
I'm 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 enjoying the series. Um, I'm not expecting Marissa to make it through. I don't entirely expect Marissa to make it through, but I'm saying it wouldn't surprise it wouldn't entirely surprise me if she did. But yeah. Either way, as she's a character we've never met previously, it's, I'd say it's safe to say, the bare minimum, there will be a, the reason we haven't heard from her that we've never met her before will be likely explained by the end of the series. Moving on to our next book, we've got All Out Avengers, number two. Where we left off, the Avengers had uh, dealt with a, uh, had saved the world from a cosmic threat, though. One of the one of the others involved, Blade, was questioning his mem- his memories of of the entire event, namely not remembering certain aspects of the beginnings of it. So we begin in Latveria. Doom wielding both Molnir and Cap's shield, and issuing the battle cry, Avengers assemble against Doom. His assembled Avengers, in this case being Black Panther, Iron Man, and She-Hulk. Um, turns out that uh, Doom read from a performed a ritual which expunged the goodness from him, but split them into two beings. But more in a split Doom into his good side, the, the good part of it, the good parts of him and the evil parts of him. Um, Captain Marvel, for most of the heroes have fall have at least fallen, not not been but at least been defeated by Doom. But uh, the Avengers retreat and uh, plan their plan their strategy, and uh, it turns out while while they were at Doomstock, Tony Stark, Iron Man was able to take to uh, snag the Book of Wrath, which Doom needs to set things right. But uh, Iron Man's not beginning to question things. Basically, you know, saying he knows all these things happened. Doom's experiment with the soul splitter, the power fluctuations he detected, the attack on the monastery, Doom splitting into his light and dark dark halves. He knows they happen, but he doesn't remember them happening. Blade is uh, is uh, also dealing with monsters elsewhere. Um as part of the assault on uh, the planned assault on uh, Dark Doom. But uh, the darker the darker Doom is uh, gloating to his prisoners, Captain America, Thor, and Captain Marvel. Iron Man uh, shows up, as does She-Hulk. And, and Doom. Uh, Doom manages to take down Iron Man. Dark Doom. But, uh... While uh, Doom has Dark Doom distracted, Blade takes the uh, necessary gem and tosses it to Doom. Who crushes it in his fist and reemerges with his dark self? And Iron Man thanks Doom for saving their lives. Later, while they're, while the Avengers are celebrating, um, Tony asks his armor. to download the last 40 hours of the footage, but the files aren't found. The footage is corrupted. And our narrator states that this could be a problem. And that is where the issue ends. 
this this is, this is definitely proving to be an interesting miniseries so far. Um, it'll be it'll, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it, how it all plays out. But just to see what it is, who it is that's manipulating things behind the scenes. Moving on to our next book, we've got Black Panther number ten. Where we left off, the colonialists had returned to Earth. Um, the Avengers once again were uh, in the midst of trying to get him to leave, but he didn't want to, and uh, this proved to be a bit of a problem. But uh, Black Panther managed to get a, uh, a waveform generator built to mimic the uh, waveform used by uh, by Doctor Strange in the in the first uh, battle against colonialist forces. However, upon returning to where the colonialist, the colonialist and his forces were, Black Panther was uh, attacked by an agent of the colonialist, the Buffalo Soldier. Him and, Bla him and Black Panther duke it out. During the fight, uh, the Buffalo Soldier shoots the waveform generator, destroying it, while... Uh, Cap, Thor, and Captain Marvel are trying to deal with uh, the colonialist foot soldiers. Cap's trying to uh, get information, though, from trying to see how far along things are on uh, the waveform generator. And uh, Black Knight is able to explain that, yeah, it's been damaged. It's not, we can't use it. But he. Uh, Back in Wakanda, um, the Prime Minister is uh, discussing how things are going to be in Wakanda going forward. Shuri is able to uh, work on getting a, another uh, waveform generator, generator built. And also manages to get a, uh, send a, uh, his, a history file on actual Buffalo soldiers. Um, but uh, the Buffalo Soldier expl explains that uh, on the world he's from, the, colonial the colonialists helped uh, his people take out another group known as the Mugabe. Seems the Mugabe, the Mugabe seem the way they're described seem fairly similar, analogous to that Earth's uh, Wakandans. All they had to do, though, was take out the Mugabe and then mine the metals for the colonialists. Mine some precious metals for the colonialists. Precious metals would seem to uh, not have a problem with uh, vibranium. But uh, Buffalo Soldier shoot, ends up shooting uh, Black Panther and uh, upon hearing it but at, upon hearing his speech, he opts to switch sides de and does what he can to deal with uh, the colonialist uh, forces. Um, a Wakandan vessel arrives with the rebuilt waveform generator, which is then used to uh, get rid of the colonialist forces. The colonialist is still there, however, with his brides, and. Uh, well, he's turned over to their, to their uh, tender mercies. The issue ends with Shuri having, uh, fi having uh, fixed some repairs to uh, Cap's shield. And Cap and Shuri just talk about uh, what's going on with T'Challa, with while T'Challa's in surgery, with uh, Shuri explaining that uh, you know, that T'Challa's lost two, you know, two very two people he's very close to, a man he trusted like a friend and one he loved like a brother. And after the surgery, T'Challa's just trying to figure out just where to go. Where to go from, from this point? And 
that is where the issue ends. Interesting. Um, I am, I'm enjoying John Ridley's run on uh, Black Panther so far. So It does... A uh, previewed cover, or upcoming cover, does seem to, to point to uh, Black Panther being removed from the Avengers it's pretty soon. So we'll see what... We'll see how that plays out. Moving on to our last... Or, or not, our, not our last, our next last book for the moment, for this video. We have Genius Vell, Captain Marvel, number four. Where we left off in the past, Genus Vell was uh, fighting the uh, Kree soldier Shatterax in, on Halva Center. While in the present, Genus and Rick Jones are trying to uh, find Rick's estrangement. It's either estrangement for ex-wife Mar Marlo. And, well, Genus has found her in the clutches of uh, a Kree scientist, the Kree scientist who, in fact, resurrected Genus. Uh, also, Rick is, uh, has negative bands and is trying to get back to, uh, is trying to get to Genus as well so that the two, him and Genus can hopefully stabilize themselves. Um, he's along for the ride is uh, Genesis now multiversal sister Phyla so uh, we start in the past with the fight between Shatterax and uh, Genus it uh, it seems to it, you have points where it's definitely going in uh, Shatterax's favor points where it's going in uh Genus's favor. Marlowe suggests that uh, Death, you know, run, keep running from uh, from the stream of, from the stream of intelligence. The fight between uh, Genus and uh, Shatterax comes to a close, however, when Shatterax manages to catch punches from each of uh, Genus's hands, holding his hands in place, and then slam the Negabands together, replacing Genus with Rick Jones. Shatterax then goes to take care of Death, but, uh... uh somewhat, but another, uh, another ally of Death appears, unknown who, but they, she snaps, uh, she seemingly, uh, Snaps Shatterax away. Then Genus shows back up, and Marlo can't remember who it was that uh, saved them, saved her, and Death. In the present, um, Marvel wants to know just why it is that uh, Renvar has. Marlow held prisoner when his guards arrive. Um, while back in with Phyla and Rick, while Phyla's pushing the Quinjet as far as it can go, it's still, or as fast as it can go, it's still not uh, getting there fast enough for Rick's taste. She suggests that she can, uh, she, she mentions she can warp space, but the Quinjet wouldn't survive that. So it suggests perhaps they could put the ship on autopilot and see the Negabands will protect uh, Rick in the vacuum of space. Spoiler, they do. Um, Renvar's guards are defeated, but he manages to knock out Genus. However, one of the guards is in fact Jacinda and wants... Uh, Renvar to answer Genesis' question about, you know, if he's got death, if, you know, why, why is uh, Renvar keeping Marlo prisoner? Apparently it's uh, the idea being getting her to uh, basically snap the uh, Kree race back into existence.
And, well, it turns out that Renvar's an old friend to, to deal with uh, Genus, uh, at least to make sure that uh, no one interrupts his uh, experiments. Shatterax. And that is where the issue ends. I mean, this has been a fun book. Um, I'll be interested to see how things play out, that's for sure. But anyway, moving on to our last book for the moment, actually, our, our actual last book for the moment, we've got Namor the Submariner, Conquered Shores, number one. So this is an interesting uh, first issue for... Interesting first issue for this for the miniseries. Um, in the uh, future, the earth has been flooded completely. Um, water approach covers the entirety of the, pl of the planet, and uh, so Namor, well, was the uh, ruler of the world. But, um, so there's a, the explanation is that the Kree did something which the Atlantean science can't figure it out, can't figure it out, and, uh, melted all the ice caps and destabilized every stream and drift, or disrupted, and toxified the air for decades. Um, every, all the, Every last super every uh, superhero went off uh, to fight the Kree, except for the mutants who who took it all as a sign to fully leave the planet. But the superheroes never came back. And as for Namor, he did what uh, any ruler of the safe of the same thing Seabound would have done. Nothing. He has since uh, stepped down from the throne, and uh, his. Cousin named Rita is now the uh, is now the queen, but uh, so there are two human settlements. One on in the was referred to as the oxygenated settlement zone or dry man's land, where it's not all, not all the superheroes are gone, as Captain America is there, stopping fights and things are. Basically, th things are a little rough there because they don't get, you know, sometimes shipments are late or just get skipped altogether, you know. So, but and so Cap tries to talk some, tries to talk to uh, Namor about doing more to help, even telling him that there's actually been a human birth hmm. up on the surface, the surface world. The human elements on the super service world are led by Luke Cage, who has no interest whatsoever in uh, going underwater to join to the ocean, to dry man's land. A fight breaks out between uh, Cage take a swing take a swing at Namor and uh, Namor's guards attack the. Uh, the humans turn, and we learn that the uh, that yes, there was a human birth. The mother died. Three minutes later, so did the child. Never even opened her. No, never even opened her eyes. But uh, after the fight ends, uh, Namor looks up and seems that the human torch is flying to the air. And that is where the issue ends. And it's supposed to be the Golden Age of Torch, Jim Hammond, not Johnny Storm. So, interesting start. Uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out. Which I know I've been saying that a lot tonight. So, yeah. But it it does that. It's definitely seeming like I said. It, it's an interesting start. So, yeah. We'll be sticking around. I'll be sticking around with the, with the series to its conclusion. But uh, anyway, that is going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.